The audio receiver of Bitwig Studio receives audio from a different track. You can select the audio source here. Maybe we use this PolySynth here, this PolySynth output. And you can use this audio material here and mix it or blend it in with your current audio material. So you can inject audio in certain places in your chain and can grab audio from different tracks and bring it into your current track. There's also a source FX box here where you can add some additional audio effects, also VST devices, maybe a tool device, maybe compression, maybe a reverb, whatever you want to use to alter your audio before you inject it. There's also a gain knob here where you can match the level of the incoming audio with your current audio level. So it makes sense to mix it in actually. And there's this mix knob here, of course. And it's nice that you can modulate this mix knob because it makes this device basically nice for creative uses. And I'll show you in a minute how you can do that. But first I want to close this down here and can show you that you can use this audio receiver actually on an instrument track. And instrument tracks are actually only made for instruments. That's why they are called instrument, instrument tracks. We can use a pulley synth here. And you can see we can play this pulley synth now with our keyboard and also receive MIDI data from the piano roll and also use the drop downs here. And on this drop down, you can only select uh, tracks with MIDI data. So you can select MIDI controllers or keyboards and also um, different MIDI tracks or instrument tracks here where you have MIDI data on it or note data on it. So um, on these instrument tracks, you can use the audio receiver and inject audio here and blend it together with the output of this pulley synth. So it makes basically the instrument tracks receivable for audio data. So this is basically a special use case. You can also decide where you want to inject your audio. So you can move this over here maybe, right? Or you have a reverb here at the end and you want to inject the audio in front of the reverb or after the reverb. So you can decide where you at this data or where you inject it. So this makes it a bit special um, uh, because you have the freedom of choosing where you want to inject audio. Um, you can also delete this here again. So another way of using this is um, we have here this instrument track and there is basically one audio receiver here. And we have here on the first track, just some kind of beat Okay, and then we have down here a collection of multiple tracks. And these tracks are basically synthesizers playing some sounds. And when you unmute this here and we play everything together, it sounds like this. So basically a lot of sounds playing together at the same time. Okay, so what we can do now is, and that's pretty fun actually to do, is to just mute this group here go to the mix, uh, mixed instrument track here where we have our audio receiver and then say, I want to receive audio here from the first synthesizer in this collections group, right? Polysynth uh, one output post, it's this track, right? And then we um, yeah, just duplicate this here and select the second Polysynth output, duplicate, select the third one. And we have also a bass in there collection base output, right? So now we receive audio from these four tracks here in this collection folder and the collection bus is basically muted. So we can hit play here. Or oh, let's actually sing all this, solo this here. Um, so we can hit play here and then we can fade in this synthesizer or this track. So you can bring this in. And what we can do now is we can use a chain device and put all of these audio receivers into this chain device. And on this chain device, we can use um, a Parsec 8 modulator. And you can see we have your multiple steps and we can modulate something with each with uh, each step. And there's also um, a tutorial on this page here for the Parsec 8 if you want to dive into this more. So we can use uh, the first step, modulate the first audio source, then the second one, the third one, 
and the fourth one. So now we bring down here the steps to four because we have only four steps. You can use, of course, your eight uh, audio receivers if you want to. And now when we hit play, we basically step through the sequencer here and mix in each of these devices. So instead of playing this basically in parallel all the time, like we did here with the collections, right? We just mute this, use this uh, instrument track here, use the Parsec A to sequence basically when we fade in each of these audio receivers. So we play only one sound or one track at a time with this, which makes it already interesting. And so it sounds like a riff, right? It sounds like some kind of sequence that's nice to listen to. Um, but we can also now alter here this, the settings of this Parsec A to make some changes to how it plays back. So first uh, we can introduce here a groove. So we have a global shuffle, 50%, uh, which is pretty much, uh, yeah, very much actually for this uh, type of track. Uh, so 50% and we can use the transport on this POSIC 8 and use with groove. So now the playback is actually shuffled by the global shuffle amount. We can change the playback direction with this. So we can play it uh, backwards and forwards. We can change this playback speed here. Or maybe a bit slower here or dotted. So something like this. Um, and you can also use here the smoothing option. That's the that's the face modulation, this one here. So when we turn this up, you can see it it switches from switching these devices to slowly fading between these devices. So this is nice to know when you actually deal with some zero crossing click um, click uh, sounds and you want to, you know, get rid of this, you dial up here the smoothing a bit. So it slowly fades between these mix knobs, which makes it a bit smoother, I guess. Um, another thing is, yeah, that you can play around with the groove and you can use multiple rece receivers here and um, use this in multiple creative ways, right? So this is also nice if you do some bass music and you wouldn't want to switch between different bass sounds pretty fast. And you also want to change when you switch between these um, these bass sounds in a rhythmical way. So you can also modulate this Parsec 8 again with different, maybe with the step mod here, right? You can say I'm using a step mod here and then modulate the speed setting here or the playback direction with this. Um, or let's use this one here. Maybe you go for two and then randomize this here. So you can use this in all kinds of creative ways to bring in audio from different tracks. Uh, that's at least how I use it most of the times. And uh, it's just one use case I want to show you. Okay, so this is the audio receiver here of Bitwig Studio. Um, it's creative and it's nice to have.